y'all. Tonight I'm going to be making a Sloppy Joe casserole. Um, this was sent to me from my friend Jessica off of Instagram. Um, I was talking about wanting to do um, Christmas cards and do like a recipe swap on it. And she was one of the people that wanted to do that. So she sent me a couple of recipes and I decided to do this one. So I started out, I have about a pound of hamburger meat. And her recipe called for one and a half cups of diced onions. I just kind of guessed at it. A pound of hamburger meat and I don't know, probably one onion. I'm not sure how much, but I'm throwing a little garlic powder in my meat and I'm going to put salt and pepper and we're just going to brown this, uh, get it all cooked up. Okay, y'all, I got the meat done and I've got it um, all drained. We're gonna add two and a half cups of chicken broth. And so what I'm doing is I have two and a half cups of just hot water. And I'm gonna use this, um, the Nor um, Poyo, which is chicken flavored bouillon. And it calls for one teaspoon per cup. So I'm gonna put two and a half teaspoons and we're gonna mix this together for, and add it to our meat. So I have my, have that in there. I'm just gonna quickly just kind of whisk it together. not going to dissolve probably completely but now I'm going to add that I'm also going to add in a can of petite diced tomatoes with the juice along with a can of just the original manwich uh, like the sloppy joe seasoning or whatever mix that together well We want to bring this up to like a gentle boil and then we're going to add in some pasta. I'm adding in the like bow tie pasta or I don't know how you pronounce it. Far, farfa, farfa, farfali, farfa, I don't know. Anyways, we're going to add in about three quarters of that box once this starts to kind of boiling. And then we're going to let that cook until it's like al dente. If you're like me, I used to not know what that meant, but it means basically until the noodles are almost done like they still have kind of a bite to it so because we're going to transfer it to the oven so oops i have my oven preheating to 375 right now so i'm gonna let this come to like a boil and i'll come right back okay y'all have it come into a gentle boil like it said so we're going to add about three quarters of this box i'm not the best at That's about right. So, I'm going to cook this. It says for authentic al dente, boil for about 11 minutes. So, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and then just kind of go from there. So, that's what we're going to do. Okay, y'all. I have eight ounces of Velveeta that I cubed up into little blocks. We're going to add this in. And I turned this down, but it hasn't slowed down yet. But we're gonna try to get all this cheese. It also called for one cup of frozen corn, but I'm not doing that because I think Courtney would freak out because she's not a big corn eater. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir this in and then I'm gonna put the lid on it. I just have it on low and just kind of get all this Velveeta to melt. And then we're gonna transfer this to a baking, uh, to a casserole and we're gonna bake it. So, I'm gonna get this all done. Okay, y'all, while that is melting, I have a nine by 13 inch baking dish or a casserole dish. I sprayed it with some cooking spray. I think it's all melted, so now we're gonna pour this, ah, pour this in here. Okay, now I'm gonna get some shredded cheese and we're gonna put, it says one and a half cups, so I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate. We're gonna cover this with some sh shredded cheddar cheese. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I'm just, I may have put more, I don't know. I'm going to cover this with foil, 
put it in the oven. I have it preheated to 375. We're gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then it's done. I think tonight, I've been baking all day, y'all. So I think tonight, this is all we're gonna have. We're just gonna have a bowl and we're gonna eat this and I think it'll be just fine. I'm not even gonna make any sides. <laughs> so I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, y'all, got it done. Just took it out of the oven. It is hot and bubbly. So we're gonna give it a try and let you know what we think. Okay, Adrian, he's went back for his second plate. What do you think about it? It's good. I think it's good too. What about you, Bryce? It's really good. I think so. Courtney said, I don't like it tastes like spaghetti. She's weird, y'all. I don't know what's wrong with her. She used to not be as picky. What is wrong with her now? I like the nails, but. Y'all, I went back for more. Mm -mm. Flavor tastes like spaghettios. It does not taste like spaghettios. It's very good. Look, Adrian's even getting a little bit more. It just tastes like extra te cheesy sloppy joes with noodles yeah. in it. I think, Jessica, thank you for sending me this recipe because I think it's good. So, three out of four of us think it's very good. Three she, out of four eaters approve of yeah, <laughs> she's just different. So, we won't, we won't even count her. Let's just say all three of us, I'll give thumbs up. Thanks for sharing. I'll have to make this again. <laughs> Hey y'all, tonight I'm gonna to be making something I have never made before. I'm gonna make fish and chips and it's actually on a sheet pan. So it's kind of like a one pan meal. So I have a package of Atlantic cod. Um, the recipe called for about a pound of cod. So um, I hope this will work. I've never ever cooked cod. So just a second and we're going to open this up. Okay, I had to go and turn the TV off. So what we're wanting to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut these. Um, I should be able to make about four pieces. Uh, the way that it described, oh, it's in some kind of liquid. This is my first time, y'all. I don't know um, much about fish, so. Uh, oh, there's actually a few pieces in here, okay. Um, I'm assuming everything's ready, but it was saying that about four by four inches by two inches. Y'all know I'm not good at this. How can I? Cool, I got this little thing here. So, so if we want it four inches, be about right here. Oh man, I cut that short. Okay, that one's a little bit wider, but it'll be all right. I'm gonna cut these into what I think should be the right size. I don't really know. And if I'm doing this wrong, y'all can let me know because like I said, I've never done this before. I have that smaller piece. And actually, this is quite a bit of fish. I thought it was, it looked like it was less. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is wash my hands. <laughs> We're going to marinate this fish for about 20 minutes in the refrigerator. Um, so I have a Ziploc bag and I don't see my light. we're going to put a fourth of a cup of buttermilk into a Ziploc bag. So that's what I'm doing here. And we're also going to put one teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning which I bought. I had never used Obey, so I bought me some. Let me open this up. A teaspoon of that in there. Then we're gonna add in our fish. So anyways, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and we're gonna let this marinate. And in the meantime, we're gonna make some basically the chip part, which will be potato wedges. So I've got my oven preheated to 400, so I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and then I will be right back to show y'all the next part. Okay, y'all, I have three large russet potatoes that I have peeled and cleaned. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut them in half lengthwise 
and then you're going to take each half and cut it into thirds. So you should have six um, potato wedges. I'll see if I do very good because I'm not the best. So my middle wedge is a little bit thicker. So I think I'm going to cut it like that, just so. And then do this one. And I measured these with my little, um, I have a little scale because it called for about one and a half pounds of potatoes. So I guess as close as you want. It was saying you should have six, but these I didn't cut very good. So I'm just trying to get them as close to the same size. I've got a bowl here and we're going to go ahead and put our potato wedges into the bowl. And we're going to also add some olive oil, probably about a tablespoon or so. I'm just going to kind of guess. And then we also want to add in some Old Bay seasoning. We want to add in two teaspoons. And then we're going to kind of toss this all together. I'm going to use, let's see if these will work. Kind of toss it all together and coat it as best I can. You know what, I have a lid for this. I'm going to see if I can shake it up. So that way, there we go. That did good. Okay, so now I am going to get my baking sheet and we're going to um, spread them out on the baking sheet. But the first thing I want to do to my baking sheet is I'm going to put some oil on it and then we're going to spray it with some cooking spray. That was the one thing I forgot to do a while ago. Okay, now we're going to spray some non-stick cooking spray all over this really well. And then I'm going to take our potatoes and um, we're going to put an even layer of those. I'm just going to do this so that I don't pour the extra liquid in there because they're all coated. So we're just going to make a single layer. And I've had some people ask me about my little colored tongs. And I got these from the spring shop from Hobby Lobby. It's been a couple years ago, but usually every year they have them. So right now they're starting to put all their spring stuff out. So if y'all are looking for any of these little, little tongs or whatever you call them, um, now would be a good time to start looking since they're starting to put all that out already. I'm trying to flatten that over there. <laughs> Anyway, so what we're gonna do is I have my oven preheated to 400. I'm gonna put these in there and we're gonna let these bake, but we're going to, um, about halfway, we're gonna um, flip them, right? Yeah, we're gonna turn them over. Well, I cannot speak anything, right? So anyway, so about halfway through, about 12, 13 minutes in, we're gonna flip these over uh, and we're gonna, in total, let it cook for 25 minutes. And then we'll come back and we're going to add our fish to this. So when I come back, we'll be adding fish. So don't forget, flip them halfway in the middle of the cooking time of 25 minutes. Okay, y'all, we're going to get our um, our bowls ready. Anyways, we're going to get our bowls ready for um, dipping the fish. So I have a fourth of a cup of flour in this bowl. And then we're going to do two egg whites, just the whites. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. So... Trying to get just the whites. Okay. Then we're gonna take another egg. This one broke, so I got a little bit of yellow in there. Ah. And we're gonna add a teaspoon of Old Bay to this one. And we're gonna mix this up until it gets a uh, like foamy looking, that's what it says to do. So, I'm so not prepared y'all, I'm so hungry. And this is taking me longer than I expected. I think that's good. Okay, and then we're going to do a third dish that we're gonna put one cup of Panko breadcrumbs in. 
We're also gonna put one more teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning to that. So total, you need five teaspoons of this for your recipe. And then I'm gonna just stir that together. Just a spoon. And we're about to get our fish ready to. Okay, y'all, got the potatoes. They're not completely done, but that's okay. They're gonna cook a little longer. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna push them kind of over to one side so that we can put our fish on. And I'm gonna kind of flip some of these too while I'm at it because, um, I don't know, just because. Okay, now I'm gonna take you over and we're get, get, going to get our fish ready. Don't you hate when you think you're recording and you're not? Okay, I shook, I took the fish out of my marinade, okay? And then I'm dipping it into the flour. I shook it off to get all the excess flour off. Now we're gonna dip it into the egg and we're gonna coat it well on both sides. The ends somewhat coated. I'm using a fork. I was gonna use a little flipper thing, but okay, we're gonna shake that off. And now we're gonna stick it into the panko and we want it to get real good and coated. Just press that in however you have to do it. Make sure it's all good. We'll do the other side real good. And then we're gonna place it over on our pan. And I may have to scoot them even more because my fish is kind of bigger than what I expected. So, I'm gonna continue on doing this. Okay, y'all, I got all the fish on there. Move some of the potatoes around more. We're gonna stick it in the oven and let it cook for 15 minutes until it's um, golden and flaky. Okay, y'all, it is done. I checked the fish, it is flaky. Um, I think it's gonna be good. And I also cut up some lettuce and tomatoes uh, if anybody wants salad. So we will plate this up and I will let you know what we think about it. I'm gonna cut a lemon up. And so if you wanna squeeze lemon on it and I have tartar sauce and ketchup. So we'll be back. Y'all, I might just have to pat myself on the back. Okay, Courtney, what do you think? She told me it was so pretty. Say what you said. It was pretty, so if I didn't, if I was at a restaurant and I ordered this fish and um, I hadn't even tried it yet, I'd probably think it was pretty and tell them, good job, you're looking pretty. Oh, and so and you like it? Yeah, and the potatoes, um, I don't like eat french fries with uh, ketchup or anything, but with potato wedges and hash browns, I eat ketchup with. So mm -hmm. if you eat ketchup with it, it gives a little bit more flavor. And salad is salad. Mm -hmm. but. And we squeeze some lemon juice on there. This is the, the dressing I use. Oh yeah, she family. likes the zesty Italian. So you like the fish? Okay, now let's ask Bryce. I haven't had fish in a long time. I know, right? I'm, I've never cooked cod ever. And this was not like frozen cod out of a package that you just she put kept, in the oven. She kept calling it cod. Cod. You kept saying cod. <coughs> I did? It's just the way mom talks. That's just the way I talk. So do you like it, Adrian? Uh, yeah. You want some more? Well, there's more. I'm, I'm, I'm still working on mine. Y'all, really like I am so proud of this. Life. It was very good. I highly recommend yeah. it. And it was not hard for someone who okay. does not cook fish. Look at that. It's flaky and everything. Um, I mean, like, you know. Hey, y'all. Tonight, we are going to be making a cheesy fajita baked chicken. So, I'm going to start out. I'm going to cut up this red bell pepper. So there's our red one. Well, I was gonna try to do something fancy and with the camera on this uh, cutting of this bell pepper and I forgot. So we're just gonna cut this bell pepper up right here. I also got a smaller onion and just sliced it up too to add in with my peppers. Okay, we've got our onions cut. Okay, y'all, now I have um, two big chicken breasts. They're about almost two pounds, and that's what we want. And I'm gonna slice these up very thinly. Okay, got the chicken sliced up now. Okay, now we're gonna spray the bottom of a nine by 13 inch pan. And then I'm going to lay the chicken just along in the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna take, I have a block of cream cheese that, um, that I have softened, or I hope that it's soft enough. We're gonna put that in here, along with, along with a third a cup of salsa. Okay, 
And then we're going to take a fajita seasoning packet and we're going to put um, half of that. I just kind of try to measure it. So that's as close as I can. Now we're going to mix that together really well. Okay, now we're going to spread this over the top of our, across the top of our chicken. And now we're going to top it with our peppers and our onions. Okay, now I'm going to add, sorry y'all that I have y'all zoomed in so much. I'm using this triple cheddar cheese. It has Vermont cheese, sharp cheese, and mild cheese. So we're going to, <clears throat> I'm going to start out with a cup and then, because it says one to two cups. So I may put another cup because I like a lot of cheese. Okay, now what we're going to do is I have the oven preheated to 375. We're going to put it in there uncovered and we're going to cook it I'm going to say, I'm going to start out with about 25 minutes. It says 20 to 45 minutes. It's going to depend on the size of your chicken. But since I cut mine pretty thin, I'm hoping that about 25 minutes will be enough. But I'll let you know. Okay, y'all. I let this cook a little over 30 minutes. And I think it's good and done. I also made some of this, just the Nor uh, Fiesta sides, the Spanish rice to go with it. And we have some salad from last night if anybody wants any. So we will plate this up and let you know what we think. All right, Courtney, how do you like it? She doesn't like the rice, so but... so much peppers. I don't like Spanish rice, so I'm not going to try it, but... Um, okay, good. <laughs> okay, Bryce. It's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. I haven't... I don't like peppers. <laughs> well, but I yeah. told them I made the peppers pretty big, so if they don't want them, they can pick them, uh, pick them out. Okay, what do you think, Adrian? Good? I think it's good too. I went back and got some more. It was a little bit juicier. I don't know if it should have thickened up, but it was good. I like it. Easy too. Hey y'all, I want to share with y'all a product that I was sent called Box of Jerks from www.boxofjerks.com. <laughs> and it just came in the mail. And... It says be a jerk. Oh, that's... Oh. Okay. This comes from ooh, Chester County, Pennsylvania. And it says, we strive to bring you the best craft beef jerky month after month from the top suppliers across the U.S. And it says you can follow them on Instagram. So anyways, uh, there's a card. Ooh, a Christmas card in here. I'm going to quickly look at it. Inside of here, ooh, we got Rochus Fellow Craft Jerky, the OG Hickory. Is that what it says? Yeah. They don't open it yet. We also got Derby City Jerky, Bourbon Barrel Wood Smoked. This is kind of neat. We also got, oh, yeah, this one. Av you want to tell them? Avalon be be Meat Candy, Barbe and it's just the barbecue flavor. <laughs> this one has a flosser included, Jamie Bergeron, Bergeron's. Cajun jerky. Cajun jerky. See? It has a flosser that it comes with in the bag. And then we have another Avalon meat candy, a uh, mango tango beef jerky Hawaii. Oh, can I try one? So, which one do we want to try? We're not going to open all of them, but... Hey, Jerome, which see. one do you want to try? We can try. Uh, there's what do we mango try? tango Cajun jerky barbecue bourbon barrel wood and OG hickory. Hey, wait, that. open it where we can seal it. Open Fantastic. it where we can seal it. Here, I'll do it so nobody has to fight over it. Okay, okay y'all. So this one here that we're opening is the OG Hickory, the Rochus Fellow. No, Rochus Felon. I thought I said Fellow. Rochus Felon Craft Jerky. It has a cow on it. It's, yeah, it has a cow and he, he looks like, oh, look, he is standing up. You can see where he's like got it. It's his mug shot. <laughs> okay, let's see. We're going to each try some and we'll let you know what we think. Okay, let's see. Craft Jerky. There's you a piece. And you a piece. 
Honey, you want to try a piece? Oh, he's not in here. I'm going to try a piece. Mmm. Mmm. No. I don't know. Pretty good. Yeah, I like mine. it. Mm. I want a bag. You no. Know. Yeah. Let's show them back. What's the next one that we want to open? Um, we'll open another one. I want to open the Cajun one. Let's open okay. the Cajun one. Got it? This one no. Oh. The... I want to try that mango tango. The mango tango. Okay. So now we're trying the mango tango. Mom's still chewing on that one over there. You gotta keep that flavor. They're this like is the there's a tiny piece. Avalon beef. Don't try it yet. Candy. Smells pretty good. Wait, let me smell it. Mmm. Okay. Okay. Mmm. Not bad. And we just got it, so it's kind of cold from being outside in the mail. That one has like a <clears throat> spice <throat> after. Mmm. It kind of is. This one is, um. We're just gonna try all of them. Now we're gonna try the bourbon, bourbon barrel. Hawaii's one. favorite aloha shoyu or something. We're trying one at a time, Adrian. Mm -hmm. We're doing the. We're just trying a piece of everyone. Now okay. we're doing the bourbon barrel wood smoked. That one did have a class. Okay, I'll give you one small. I don't piece. want a big piece. Okay, here we go. Here you go. Here you go. Right? What's mm. this one? This is the. I like this one. Bourbon mm. barrel wood smoked beef jerky. It's, is that one like this one's original? Good. It'll taste like a normal one. Mm. This one's slow cooked over authentic Kentucky bourbon barrel. Okay, stage. that one's good. Kind uh, of sweet so far, now, this is my favorite. So now far. we're gonna open the the Jamie Bergen's Cajun jerky, the original kind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what we got in here. It said it comes with a floss pick, so let's see what we got. <laughs> it actually has a floss pick. Oh, in it. there you go. That old floss pick. No, let's see. Let's see. Wanna, I don't want a big piece. These are kind of bigger. We'll break one right here. here. I'll get one in. Hold on. There's you a piece. Here. Him a piece. Get me a piece. Mmm. Mm. That one's good. I'll be helping that one. No, you gotta open one. Okay. Mm. This one, one really mm. is the Avalon oh, Meat Candy one. Barbecue Beef Jerky. Hawaii, Hawaii. It was from the same as the, the mango, mango tango, tango mm -hmm. wango, dango. Let's see if I can get that open. It's fresh and, and I will. On, I will. Uh. What's this one? Just barbecue. It's not bad. Are you barbecue? Good too. Mm -hmm. So I recommend it. You should go get it. Which one? Oh, you're you're gonna pick. Well, y'all can share them. All of them, y'all can all share. Uh uh. Yes. Yes. Yes, we can share. My favorite one has to be um. probably the um this one right here. This is my favorite one. The Derby City Bourbon Smoked Wood one. That was my favorite. I'm gonna smoked wood. Which go, one's go. your favorite? Me? Um not sure. I like the ones that ain't as hard. Yeah, that's like me too. There was the very first one I think was the hardest one and I didn't. I'm going to try another piece of this one. Cause... And the way that this works, you can um, join like and have it sent to you every month or you can do just a one-time purchase. One-time um, purchase, yeah. Yeah. Not bad. And so when you go to their website, yeah, it was awesome. Um, okay, the, ba the box we had had how many in it? Five. Five? Okay. This one here would be thirty six seventy five for five bags. Of what? Not so bad. Mm -mm. Well, considering beef jerky is it's, can be expensive. Can be expensive. So, like you can go to at Walmart and spend eight to nine, ten dollars for a bag of beef jerky. So true. And when you go to choose your flavors, you can also customize it by kind of telling them. Um, like this says, you can choose. Um, it says you can skip this section and they'll just whatever, you know, let you know. But if you prefer like original, citrus, barbecue, spicy, hot, peppered, hickory, teriyaki, you can choose the different flavors that you want. This one, the OG hickory one, is a little bit more harder, but if that's, your, if, that's, if that's what you like, that's what you like. 
Anyways, I just wanted to thank a Box of Jerks for sending us this and letting us try it. We love beef jerky in this house, so thank you very much, uh, Box of Jerks. And y'all go check them out. I will have them linked down in the description box below. So, yeah, y'all go check them out.